Providing live finance advice on WMAC since 1993. It's time for Your Money with Steve Rosenberg, Sherry Goss, and Randy Goss. To participate in today's program, call 478-742-0940 with your financial questions or comments. And now live from the Macon Studios of News Talk 940 WMAC, it's Your Money. Good morning, little Georgia. Good morning. Randy and Sherry Goss are here to take your calls, and CT has got the board. The phone number is 478-742-0940 if you would like to participate in the show. Uh, got a lot to cover today. And uh, if you'd prefer to text a question, oh, yeah. just yes. text to me at 478-954-2498. And you can also send him lots of spam. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah, do that. Do that, and don't block your number. <laughs> so Steve's out today. He got his second vaccine yesterday, and he didn't know how he was going to feel. The first one was fine. He just had a little pain in his arm, but you've heard stories. It made, it, it made him tired. Oh, it did make him tired? Uh, what? What are you doing? Oh, you can't hear anything? I can't hear myself, so. Ah, I can hear you fine. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, it's weird. Um, so anyway, so he's out. And that's that. And I think he's going on a vacation. Soon. I think next week he will be headed on. So Becca's going to be the on door. the show with me next Saturday. Yeah, that'll be your first introduction to Becca. And I know she's listening today. So next week, call in with a bunch of really hard questions. There you her. go. You know, she is a CFP. She knows a lot. Um, and <laughs> Sherry, I'm really concerned because she, she can talk a blue streak, you know, right? just like you do. Uh, yeah. I'm worried that you might not even get a word in twice <laughs> next week. So. I doubt that's going to happen. <laughs> Me uh, too, really. <laughs> uh, anyways, so in preparation for this show, we go to at least 12 different websites, and it fascinates me. And I, I start with Drudge uh, because this radio station, the News Talk, they use a lot of Drudge intel for their storylines. Right. And so just so I know what people, you know, people that watch Fox News a lot, people that listen to this channel a lot, to know what everybody's hearing, it helps me stay a little in touch with what's going on out there. And Forbes, Wall Street Journal, Yahoo Finance, CNBC, Fox Business. And then we subscribe to a lot of different news feeds, fundamental and technical analysis right. and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. And so it's fascinating to me when I see a story one place. I'll see it one place, and it'll get taken it's down. taken down. Yeah. From the next day, and you never see it again. Mm-hmm. So it's just... It's hard to get to what's going on, so we're going to try to get to the bottom of what's going on today. Uh, And, Sherry, you know, you just mentioned that we go to a lot of different websites, and there is a lot of prep that goes into this show. And occasionally you come across things that just make you laugh while you're doing this. And and here's one that I found. Okay, it says, it was spotted in the classifieds uh, from Newcastle, Pennsylvania. For sale, cemetery plot, $200. Explana- Seems cheap. Yeah, it is cheap. Uh, the explanation was, so, so I don't have to spend all of eternity beside my ex. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right. Okay, so the Brookdale Warming Center, Brookdale Elementary has been shut down, and so they've turned it into a warming center for homeless people. And this is just a really nice thing that, that happened. And Lester Miller, I... I'm really liking what I'm hearing out of him. So Lester Miller and several commissioners helped host a Super Bowl party for residents of the Brookdale Warming Center on Sunday the 7th of February. Local audiovisual technician Buddy Lavelle donated the TV and sound system and food was donated by Ingleside Village Pizza, Jag's Pizzeria, and The Rookery. And they say volunteer opportunities are opening back up. And so I tried looking up volunteer opportunity because I know a lot of my clients volunteer, and that's really what they do in retirement. Right. And they have been just shut down <clears throat> for a year now. So the fact that it's starting to open up is, is exciting and very mentally healthy for a lot of people. And I believe under Mayor Miller there's going to be a lot of opportunities like that. And I know yes. if you if you look at the nonprofit organizations around Macon, Bibb County, and Warner Robins, you'll find plenty of opportunities. And... Um, going forward from that is you know if you're a veteran and you are uh, looking for to start a business you or your spouse there's a great opportunity coming up for you and if you're a veteran and you've never heard of the vector center which is in warner robbins across from the base then you really need to look them up but the georgia vector center will host a free boots to business reboot course march 8th through 11th from 3:30 p.m to 5:30 p.m and it's going to be at 1001 South Armed Forces Boulevard. It's so right off Russell Parkway. Right off Russell Parkway. The Boost to Business Reboot is an entrepreneurial education, and uh, it, it uh, will cover all aspects of 
opening or starting a business and keeping it running and, and, and hopefully being profitable with it. So I encourage you, if you or your spouse are considering starting a business, and a lot of people have started new businesses with the, with the COVID, you know, suppose your spouse has a um, has been in a job somewhere, they've been laid off, and there's nothing for them to do, and you're considering, you know, taking some of your savings and, and starting a business, then I highly encourage you to do this because there's nothing worse than talking to people who had a business, but they, they had no idea what it took to run one, and we see it all the time. And don't do their taxes properly and don't right. get the support they need. There's free support, so the SBA resources are going to be at this. It's, yes. it's a partnership with the SBA, Small Business Administration, so that's there to help you too. So, yeah, just call the Vector V-E-C-T-R Center in Warner Robins and, and get more information. And uh, if you're looking, if you want the phone number, it's 478 478- Two one eight three nine three four two one eight three nine three four. Just look up Vector. In or just Google. text Randy, and he can text you back. Yeah. They may keep it easy. One phone there number. There you go. Four seven eight nine five four two four nine eight. That's or Randy, Randy Cell. Or Randy at rfmoney.com, and I'll go. get this to you. So now, I recently had I had clients in about a month or two ago. I can't keep up with time is flying. And he served during he served in the Vietnam War during that period, but he served in the European theater and mm-hmm. he has a number of presumptive disabilities. Uh, sorry, he has a number of ailments that fall under the category of presumptive disability for the VA for the Vietnam War veterans. And I said, you know, it even though you weren't in Vietnam, they keep opening up more and more locations as presumptive disability. Um, because of what went on at that location. Yes. So places in the United States, Thailand. I mean, there's all sorts of places. The Navy. Yeah, you the can hear the, the ads all water. the time. Yeah. And so he went, and they're applying for two different disabilities for him with the VA because of his service time. And was that through the Vector Center? Yes. Okay, good. He went to the Vector Center. Well, he called and made an appointment. They went and had a really good experience. And, and he had been turned down before. He had asked before, and they said, you don't qualify. Well, these guys said, yeah, you do. But actually, you know, it's it's very common for the VA to turn you down a couple of times unless you're going through some kind of major medical uh, issue. And so if you are a veteran, you have issues, uh, especially issues that are already in your medical records, but they just haven't been uh, put in for the disability you might be entitled, I encourage you, strongly encourage you to go by there and talk to one of their counselors. Make they an have, appointment. That, yes. Well, actually, you don't have to. You do now. Oh, now you do? Okay. Yeah. They used to be able to walk in first yeah, come, you, first Yeah, they serve. want you to make an appointment now. Well. But that's no big deal. If you go in, uh, get your appointment, go in, take anything you've got, uh, medical records, but they should be able to access pretty much everything through uh, the, the records the historical records and make sure that you carry your dd form 214 in case there's an issue and then pulling it up but um it's a great organization that is designed just to help veterans yep i think it's the only one of its kind in the whole country it is okay it is now before we go on i'd like to say there's a lot of stuff going on in macon it feels like a lot of things that have been closed down are beginning to reopen. So I highly encourage you to go to, I'm encouraging you to to do a lot this morning, it sounds like. But anyway, go to Macon 365, okay? It has all kinds of activities. And subscribe to it. Subscribe to it, that's right. And there there's concerts that are be go, going to be going on. There's clay classes, you know, for date night or whatever. It's There's just a, a lot. And there's the, the art studios downtown, um, um, Macon Art Alliance and the, and the 567 Center. They, they offer a lot of good products for sale, so if you're looking to support the arts, I encourage you to go to their websites and check it out. And the classes so, at the 567 Center are just a blast. They are a blast. They're a total blast. Sherry, uh, do, do, do you have any good stories from the week? Yes. That, oh, you do. Okay. <laughs> I'm just you waiting for you to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get Poor you warmed Randy. up for next week. Oh, gosh. So this is this is great. So I had a client come come to us ten years ago. She was retiring from a great job. She'd saved a million and a half, had a pension, the whole nine, debt free, just in, like a great scenario. Nice person, and um, so she brought her money to us to invest, and uh, we put her in a model portfolio, and then we call her every quarter for reviews and and all of that. And so she comes in about. Oh, gosh, I wish I could keep up with time. Probably about four years ago, she comes into an appointment and she sits down in my office and she says, I want to take out $500,000. I said, whoa. I said, what's going on? 
She said, well, I just came from the doctor, and he told me that I have two years to live, and so I'm going to start spending down my money. And she told me what the condition was, and I said, you know, I've read about that being reversed. I've read, I think you need a second opinion. I don't, I don't think you should be guaranteeing or betting on the fact that you won't be here in two years because what if you, your health improves and you spend on all your money and then you don't have anything? I said, this is not a good plan. And so we kind of arm wrestled for an hour and she agreed to only take out a hundred thousand and buy it. She wanted, there was something she wanted to buy. I said, fine, do that. And let's see how this goes. I said, do you mind if I send you some articles? If I come across an article about how to improve this condition, you know, can I send it to you? And she's like, yeah, but I'm scared to do anything because I don't want to make it worse. And you know, it is terrifying. What a terrifying thing to be told you have two years to live. Right. And no suggestion of anything positive you can do about it. I get really frustrated with this because I see it a lot. So anyways, so she comes in uh, about a year. And she came in a year later. And she looked lighter. She looked better. And I said, what's going on? I said, something's changed. And she said, you know what? I had a come to Jesus meeting with myself. And I said, you know what? You're going to start eating healthier. You're going to start cooking more. You're going to start walking every day. You're going to get back involved in church. You're going to start getting involved with positive things. And she said, I've lost 20 pounds and I feel a whole lot better. I said, well, what about your blood markers? And she goes, they're not changed, but I'm, I've got a better attitude. That's fantastic. So she came in two months ago. And sat down and I said, well, I have to, I have to ask the question. I said, how are you doing? She said, the whole thing has been totally reversed, completely reversed. Now. Now. So she's not dying. Now, and, now what would have happened if she did not have a financial advisor that could talk be, her off the wall, talk her off the wall, talk rational? I know. I, mean, I, I was so worried about yeah. her. Um, but anyways, so I was, I was so thrilled when she told me about that. I just, it blew me out of my chair. I was so relieved and so happy for her and she's still doing better and she's feeling good. And, and this whole thing has been lifted off of her. And so I'm just extremely thankful. So, so the lesson here is planning to die early is never a good retirement plan. And I hear people say all the time, I, I used to hear it more than I do now, but I hear, I hear people say, Everyone in my family dies by 80, so I can right. spend down all my money. Mm -hmm. you, you can't depend on what other people experience. Yeah, you could die today. You could die tomorrow. You could die in 10 years, but there's no guarantee of this thing. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm just thankful that she's okay, and I'm thankful yeah. that we did the right thing and that she came to us. And it was just, I just, it blew my mind, and it, it was so happy, and, and I'm so thankful that she's okay. But anyways, enough of that. Yes. Uh, well, let's. You know, let's talk about some gas prices. I think if you've been driving around or if you drive at all, you've noticed a sharp increase in, right. in the amount in the in the price per gallon um, this on all the pumps. And so, why are gasoline prices rising, and how high will they go? Gas prices are coming back with a vengeance, says this article. Um, when the pandemic pandemic hit last year, Americans hunkered down at home. Demand for gasoline plunged, and prices dropped. Last. April, the national average for all grades fell below $2 a gallon, and that was very nice. Um, and let's see here. Uh, but here are six reasons prices are going up, plus predictions on how high they go. First, crude oil prices are surging. The price of crude oil tanked last spring as COVID-19 wrecked economies and stopped people from traveling. To prop up oil prices, OPEC, the OPEC cartel and its allies slashed oil prices. But lately, the production. Cost they slashed production, production. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but lately the cost of crude has been rising steadily because OPEC has been slow to boost the output again. And the next thing is the harsh winter has been rough on refineries. The brutal winter in Texas seriously impacted the state's oil production, forcing refineries to close in America's top crude producing state, taking as much as 20% of the country's total refining capacity offline. And oil prices have continued to rally as oil demand recovers from the worst COVID-19 pandemic. And now the extreme cold weather is shutting down refineries, says Gas Buddy. And right now, Gas Buddy says they see prices going up 10 to 20 cents per gallon over the next two weeks. They already uh, have gone up 20 cents in the last right. week. I mean, we filled up one. 205, 205 last Friday, a week ago Friday, 225 yesterday. Yes. Exactly. And some places are 245, so it's interesting. And we just talked about uh, the pandemic knocking refineries out. It wasn't just be uh, it was because of em employment. Uh, people were not going into the refineries because they were isolating. And let's see, vaccinations are expected to boost travel. 
as Americans are vaccinated and life begins to return to, to something closer to normal, people are likely to drive and fly more, and that will contribute to the rising fuel cost. You can fight, you can fight back um, by shopping around for lower gas prices because they can vary for up to, by up to a dollar per gallon. And I, I've used the Gas Buddy app. And it's very good. So if you don't have that app, you know, get it. And it's free. And, and if you're worried about not getting your Kroger points because you're not feeling a big Kroger, you know, but to use your points, if you can save a dollar, right. you know. The I, savings are pretty much the same, yeah. depending on how much you buy. All right. And the stimulus check, the next one is the stimulus checks will drive up spending and prices. Congress is working on giving Americans another $1.9 trillion, as you probably already heard. And that is going to get people out and spending more money and using more fuel. And the last one is summer will bring uh, pricier gasoline blends. And I did not know this, Sherry, until this article that in the summer that they switched to pricier blends to keep the amount of carbon out of the out of the air. But anyway, so um, as we all start traveling, that's going to help fuel the, the prices on gas. The bottom line is when you see gas prices going up, it's a good sign. Yes, that means that America, America is, is getting uh, back to normal. Getting to normal, yeah. So this is an article I saw one place, Wall Street Journal. Actually, I saw it two places, Fox Business News and Wall Street Journal. Which and then and this morning, I don't know if it's still even up. Johns Hopkins expert predicts herd immunity by April. This is huge. The United States will achieve herd immunity by April, much sooner than most health officials want to admit, according to Dr. Marty McCary, I think that's how you pronounce it, a Johns Hopkins University health policy expert and surgeon. He argues in an opinion piece for the Wall Street Journal in an interview on Friday. He says, I think sci- most scientists are well-intentioned. I have had personal conversations uh, with people who said, don't put this out there in the public because they're going to stop getting vaccines and wearing masks. He says there is a 77% reduction in daily cases, or has been, over the last six weeks. 77% reduction in daily cases. You as a scientist have to ask why. We cannot explain that by vaccinated immunity. We cannot explain it by a sudden change in behavior. It is natural immunity. It's now over 50% of the population. In his article, he explains that antibody studies almost certainly underestimate natural immunity because they don't capture antigen-specific T-cells, which develop memory once they're activated by the virus. He also wrote that he thinks the United States is racing toward an extremely low level of infection and that the current trajectory expects to, to be mo- the, um, whatever, you know, whatever the C word, I'm so sick of saying it, mostly gone by April and everybody can get back to normal. Uh, he estimates estimates 55% uh, decline in the testing. Can, oh, wait, 55%? Never mind. Um, so when vaccinations were added to the equation, with 15% of the country being immunized by the end of this week and up to 40% by early April, we're going to be a really a, a serious herd immunity. And there was another one. So this article says two-thirds of the population of the United States has already had the infection. I don't know why the numbers are so screwed up. I mean, how everything's being reported differently. It says doctors are watching a new strain. Here's the next big scary thing that was thrown out there by the media. Doctors were watching the new strain that threatens to evade prior immunity. The countries where new variants have emerged, such as the U.K., South Africa, and Brazil, are seeing significant declines in daily new cases. Right. And I saw in India they were down 77%. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. So that's really good news because that's, I mean, it's, it's better than anyone expect, expected. And so surprise, Dr. Fauci. <laughs> <laughs> Masker, mask maniac. All righty. So U.S. Steel CEO. What you looking, what you doing? Somebody texting you? Mm-hmm. Oh, awesome. So the U.S. CEO... A U.S. Steel CEO says, I have to say I've gone from, even back in the second quarter of last year, cautiously optimistic, dare I say bullish, and now I am sensing there is a super cycle here with lots of cash and liquidity from the Fed. He and other companies that play in the infrastructure space are now fixated on the potential for a major infrastructure bill from the Biden administration. Should one get passed, and that's the next thing that's going to get done after this stimulus thing. Um, it would only ignite the economic super cycle he is seeing and which is starting to appear in some ep- economic data. Uh, the whole plan that Biden had kicked, uh, kicked around when he was running for office is a $2 trillion infrastructure spending plan called Build Back Better. And the next article is titled, This Week in Bidenomics, Get Ready for the Biden Boom. Um, and it talks about the rescue plan. They're probably going to send out another round of $1,400 checks to everybody that qualifies. Um 
Let me see here. And during the last year to nearly, oh, that would boost the total amount of fiscal stimulus during the last year, calendar year we're talking, not fiscal year, $6 trillion, by far the most aggressive federal response to a recession since the 1930s, which is why people are scared. We have never been here before. We have never done this large amount of throwing money around. Right. And so um, we're going to talk about that. A variety of indicators are beginning to foretell a surge in economic growth and the consequences of that. Retail sales surged 5.3% in January because of the checks that got thrown around. Um, business spending picked up as well. With even more stimulus cash likely to hit mailboxes soon, economists are raising their forecast for GDP growth. The New York, uh, New York Fed estimates first quarter GDP now to jump uh, from 67 to 8.3%. That is huge, but we were in a huge dip. That's right. So I mean, he's going he's to get the bump out of that because, I mean, when he took over, we were in a bad place, not because of the predecessor. I mean, Trump did, of, but it's just the virus the and virus. the shutdown and right. everything. So it's a legitimate question whether the Biden rescue plan is going to be too large. In addition to adding an extra trillion dollars plus to the national debt, too much stimulus can cause unintended and unwelcome consequences. Inflation. Excess inflation and asset bubbles. The one lag is likely to be employment. Some of the 10 million workers who have lost their jobs will struggle for for months or years to find work they're qualified to do, which is the big problem. They're qualified to not do much, which is why they've lost their jobs, because those like hotel industry, restaurant industry, I mean, we've got to get these people trained to do something more. Um, The political calculus, and this is very interesting. This is this this is what what is this all about? The political calculus behind the huge Biden relief plan probably anticipates all this along with the 2022 midterm elections. Biden's Democratic Party will probably be in a strong position approaching the 2022 midterms when they'll be trying to enlarge very narrow majorities in both the House and the Senate. GDP could reach pre-pandemic levels this year and rise comfortably above them by next year. Housing should remain strong and the stock market ought to remain buoyant as long as the Fed stays loose. Jobs will be the last piece of the puzzle to fall into place, and Biden may view his relief bill as an insurance policy to make as many voters as possible better off during the next 18 months. Happy days may soon be here again, and after a year of misery, Americans may not care how or why things get better. You know, Sherry, I agree with that last statement. I, I do, too. But, you know, they, they always say that the employment will be the last thing to come back, and that's true, especially in this situation, because the pandemic has... For, has caused the closure of a lot of a lot of businesses that right. just are not going to come back and and certain trades they're overstaffed because of this uh, because of the they've pandemic. learned they've learned how to work around p- having people that's right um, so we've talked about it on the show quite a bit that there's a lot of training opportunities out there that are, cost you absolutely nothing and if you are in one of those those positions that have been eliminated you know do not despair you know you need to start being proactive and what you're going to do for your own, your, you and your family's future. So take a look online. Central Georgia Cent- Tech, talk to a career counselor. That's right. Call and that's make right. an appointment Monday. But you can look, you can look around there at, at the free training that's available in 17 career Georgia. fields, right. absolutely free in that's the entire right. state of Georgia. And they have, uh, many of the colleges are offering very low cost, you know, um, blue collar trades and that are making good money. So there, there's hope for you out there. So just, just uh, don't despair. People are just detached from what could help them. And so they're just finally, I had a couple in this week, and they have a 17-year-old that is going through the dual enrollment program. So his junior and senior year of high school, he's actually going to Central Georgia, Middle Georgia Tech, and he's getting an associate's degree. So he will graduate high school with an associate's degree that cost him nothing. That's right. No student loans, no debt. He's got a jump start into his future. That's right. It is the best deal ever. Yes. All right. Sherry, let me, let me uh, I got a text here. It mm-hmm. says... Uh, Let's see. Besides all the kudos he gave us, you know, it's like patting us on the back. I like that. Thank you very oh, much. And nice. says that he is a real estate investor that buys, sells, and rents residential and commercial real estate. He knows that uh, that we own property as well. Biden is proposing several new tax laws aimed at the real estate investors. He's trying to eliminate the Section 1031 tax deferred exchanges. Mm. Do y'all think this will be passed? And when would the new tax go into effect? So, I don't know. Well. The 1031 exchange allows you, for for other listeners, it allows you to swap one piece of real estate for another, another without having to pay federal income tax. To basically sell one and buy a like property within so many days. Right. Or just, you know, between two owners even just swap. Uh, okay. You know, but, yeah, you can do one for the other. And uh, 
But anyway, it's a long-standing tax break that has contributed to uh, making of many fortunes for a lot of people. But uh, President Biden is trying to cancel the 1031 exchange. Wow. And but I've read nothing about when that's going to take place. It still hasn't, unless he does it by executive order. There's there's no language that I've seen in any article. I don't know that he can do that. Change well, the tax code well, with just, executive order. He'll, I don't know if he can either. But uh, anyway, um, why would he be targeting that? Because it's uh, I think because people are trying, wealthy people do it. Yeah, uh, because they're, they're that's what he's thinking, and, and they're yeah that's probably the biggest thing, and they're trying to raise money as much money as they can. But right. one thing that I have read is that investor this is targeting investors. Uh, with an income above four hundred thousand dollars, so if you make less than four hundred thousand dollars, it's not going to affect you. Anybody that makes over four hundred thousand dollars has got to work around making four hundred thousand dollars, and they all will. Yeah. They can take money in other ways and not and, have it as as earned income. And you know, we were reading this morning on wealth tax. It's that it seems to be the hot topic uh, in a lot of nations, and you know, th- they've tried this before. Why don't I talk about that? Okay. You, oh, you do have the article? Um, yep. Here we go. You want Here's your copy. Oh, okay. Um, so, should the rich pay for the pandemic? Argentina thinks so. Uh, it only makes sense. Is at this colonial era, est- oh, at his colonial era estate in central Argentina, this guy who has a name I can't pronounce says he's already calculating what parts of his farm he might need to sell. It's not that the crops have failed or commodity prices are ailing. It's the government's new wealth tax. The state is pushing me over the edge. He's 54 years old, and he faces a 70% tax hike under this nation's new pandemic-era levy on citizens with more than 3.4 million of assets. Uh, nations have long turned to the rich in times of great crisis. After World Wars One and Two, European nations and Japan embraced one-off wealth taxes to fund reconstruction. More recently, Ireland and Iceland used such taxes to help refill state coffers after the global financial crisis. Indeed, early data suggests pandemic spurred recessions appear to be worsening inequality. Let me see that. Say that again. Early data suggests pandemic spurred recessions. We've only had one pandemic spurred recession, haven't we? No, there was a, a pandemic in 1929. Oh yeah, that one. And there's there's been pandemics. We just haven't heard a lot about them. Right. The bird flu. We didn't we didn't get. get Nobody wild. even talked about that right. one. Millions of people died. Anyways, getting off track. So um, poverty. So they appear to worsen inequality, and that would be because of job losses for the lowest income workers, which is just not going to happen. Poverty rates have climbed, especially among younger, low-skilled, and female workers, while the wealthy are enjoying roaring stock markets and surging property values. It took only nine months for the fortunes of the globe's 1,000 wealthiest individuals, who all have a target on their head, to return to pre-pandemic levels. That lopsided result is heightening calls for a Robin Hood tax. Argentina is crap saddled with I almost said cr- crappled. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Freudian oh, slip. Crap, they're coming after me. <laughs> Saddled with crippling debt, exacerbated by the pandemic, adopted a one-time special levy on the rich in December, demanding up to 3.5% of the total net worth of citizens who hold at least 3.4 million of assets. Also in December, struggling Bolivia passed a longer-term wealth tax, hitting anyone with more than 4.3 million. Morocco this year is set to impose a solidarity contribution, which sounds nicer than a wealth tax, on companies and wealthy citizens. With Britain confronting its largest budget deficit on record, an independent wealth tax commission has recommended a one-time levy that would affect people with as little as $250,000, oh, $346,000, that was pounds. Uh, they want to identify. They have they have a big committee that they've gotten together to identify additional ways to tax extreme wealth and inequality. In the United States. Let me see. At the state level in California and Washington state, lawmakers have proposed a billionaire tax that would fall largely on the four wealthiest residents. Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos have a target on the back of their head. Well, see, Bill Gates doesn't have a problem with it. Bezos, I think they're going to have a fight. Right. You know. In Bolivia, South America's poorest country has gone beyond talk, adopting a standing wealth tax in December. The tax will touch only 152 people, but the benefits will reach thousands. Analysts say the pandemic is likely to add momentum to calls for tax systems. Uh, I'm getting to the bottom of this here. Uh, to fix 
extreme gaps between the rich and the poor, but wealth taxes are notoriously tricky to get right, and they have a history of deeply negative side effects that can seriously undermine their intent. In France, for instance, a longstanding wealth tax repealed in 2018 was blamed for an increase in tax dodging and the flight of thousands of the richest citizens to somewhere else. That's right. And, and uh, how many? Yeah, never mind. I'm not going to go there. Right. So... So here's the one about Bezos. So you can tax Bezos a billion dollars, but will he always have a billion dollars in cash just laying around that he can hand over? What would he have to sell? It's about the liquidity of assets. So can you force him to sell stock to pay this tax and pay all those capital gains? Right. Well, see, that's the problem that I have with the uh, people wanting to do a wealth tax, especially here in America, is they say, oh, we're only going to tax the people with more than a billion dollars. Well, then they spend all that money that comes into the coffers. and on, on Where's their accountability? Exactly. You know, So what is the money being used for? I'm sure it's just another entitlement program that's going to get created to do this. It's not buying down our national debt, which is what needs to be happening. Right. Um, and then... After they say, "Well, we've got the, we've got all the blood out of that turnip," well, let's, <laughs> let's 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 move on to the tomatoes. Let's move on to the tomatoes <laughs> and the carrots, and you know, and pretty soon we're down to to people like uh, like us and 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 our listeners, and you know, pretty yep. soon we've got the guy knocking on our door, like out of that movie that you were talking about a couple of about a year ago on the show, where uh, they oh, walked yeah. in and they they had all the paintings off the wall. You could see where the paintings were and. People hiding assets and yeah, they I mean, did this in Britain. They did this in in uh, England. Yeah, and it didn't work at all because everybody just hid their stuff when the tax assessor came around with this clipboard, yeah. and they never they just hid everything. And so, and you have to hire people to go do inventories yeah. and to examine what people own, so you can figure out it's it's never worked. And you know, <clears throat> back in the Jimmy Carter era, they they did the luxury tax, and so they were thinking that oh, yeah. all the people that were buying. Yachts. You know, yachts and uh, you know nice cars and and stuff like that. They they said we're going to tax that because that's a way to get the 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 blood out of that turnip again. And I guess what happened? They went some to another country and bought the stuff. Well, they quit buying yachts and all the people that Ameri- all the people that build yachts lost their jobs. Mm-hmm. So that hurt. It ended up hurting the people on the low that's end right. instead of helping them. It hurt that's them more right. than it helped. It's it doesn't trickle down. Money doesn't when when our government gets a pile of money, it doesn't trickle down free no it doesn't everybody's got their hands on it all the way down until it reaches the person and everybody's making money off of this pile that's flowing around Mm -hmm. i mean from the president the senate all these people that make all these rules they're they're all got they all got their hand out in this mess i you know we're all beginning to believe that and see that uh after this burned out on me too hey but sherry before we go on why don't you tell everybody who we are and why we're here? That's a good idea. All right. So we are Randy and Sherry Goss. We're financial advisors with uh, Rosenberg Financial Group. We have offices in Warner Robins and Macon. We do uh, free consultations. I did two this week, and the people are like, don't I need to pay you? And I said, no, we don't charge for this. I get that I see, every week. I see a lot of widows. I see a lot of people that are planning ahead for retirement, looking down the road five, ten years, and just want to bounce everything off of us uh, just to see, am I, am I on track? Mm-hmm. Is there anything I'm missing? Am, do I, my, so it's really fun, honestly. And I, yeah. a lot of times I learn something, and I get to meet a lot of nice people. So you just call the office, uh, 922-8100, or you can email uh, Felicia, Felicia at <clears throat> rfmoney.com. She schedules all the appointments, and she's just a really sweet person. So and, anyways. Um, but also, um, you know, you and Steve have minimums um, for our Retire Relax program, and Becca does too. But Becca also does financial plans. Yes. And if you're in the need of a financial plan, be it a, 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 one-time, a comprehensive. one-time simple thing or a very comprehensive plan with an ongoing uh almost like a subscription, you know, but you come in annually and, and get it updated and everything. Um, and then that kind of keeps you on track for, you know, your future. So you're, you're meeting the goal, you're setting goals and meeting them. And you have somebody like Becca who can hold you accountable for those. But also she has a program that, I mean, if you've got $5,000, we can get you into a, a Genesis program. And that way you can start saving for your future. But she's a very smart person, CFP. And um, so we have a very rounded uh, portfolios, set of portfolios that we can offer you. So give us a call, 478-922-8100. 
So the main thing, so people will ask me, how do you make any money? If you're doing free consultations all the time, how are you, how are you doing that? And I'm, we make money because we actively manage portfolios for our clients. We charge a fee for that. And we have a full-time portfolio manager that works just for me and Steve and Becca and all of us, honestly. But he works uh, and manages the portfolios. He watches the news. He watches the earnings reports. He makes changes as things change. Um, we email back and forth and talk frequently about yeah. the future and where we're headed. And, you know, uh, one of the things that's come up a lot in the last uh, – probably the last month is um, there's been a lot of people, you know, shopping for advisors. And it's just common. It happens all the time. But First quarter, it seems to happen a lot. Right. But if your advisor is not – staying in contact with you about your portfolio, then I highly encourage you to look around because we've talked to people that just have never heard. They put their money in and they never I had one hear last week. Them. He said, I've been with this guy for 10 years. He's never called me. Right. And he doesn't have like a small account. I don't understand it. And what we do is we set up quarterly or, or the meetings by what your needs are, you know, maybe you only want to meet once a year or twice a year, but normally we set up a quarterly meeting and for the managed portfolio. For the, for the managed portfolio, and then you come in and we talk about uh, where we are, what we're doing, why we've done it, and anything else, you know, grandkids, planning, whatever, you know, all of it, yep. whole package. All righty. So one of the things, <clears throat> which where do you want to go next? We have options here. Uh, Hurry up. Okay. You want to just do the, the Bidenomics? I thought I already did. I already oh, put it okay, in the trash. Oh, okay. That's right. Okay. Well, let's, let's... <laughs> you, where have you, oh, you were texting that guy. Yeah, yeah. So let's go ahead. I think this is kind of critical. Um, a couple, let's talk about a couple of tax things, tax problems. So right. a recent survey conducted by Jackson Hewitt found that 38% of Americans receiving unemployment benefits were unaware that the money was taxable. This is a disaster. Nearly two-thirds of those individuals had not set anything aside or withheld any money from their payment for their 2020 income taxes. So there are roughly 20 million Americans right now receiving jobless benefits. So if you have someone in your family that was unemployed, you need to call them this weekend and talk to them and ask them if they filled out the form to have the money withheld for federal and state taxes, because if not, they're going to owe both. Um, so the options are... If they're still unemployed and receiving unemployment, they could start withholding now. And I think they can just go to the Department of Labor website and get the form. They can pay the tax when they file their taxes, uh, or they can set, have their CPA set them up to pay quarterly taxes this year. Uh, the bottom line is, and they should get a 1099-G that shows what they received and what was withheld so that they can take it to somebody, a, a tax preparer, and find out what this is going to look like. Um, they could also file an extension uh, to the, later in the year to do their taxes and then continue to make payments uh, to, to have withholding and, and prepare and save money so that they can pay when they file. But this is really a mess. Um, this other work, t other article talks about it too. So unemployment benefits are taxable, and this includes basic state as well as the extra $600 weekly CARES Act pandemic benefits. Um, so this, so please, if reach out to people and, and check on them and see if they're prepared or what they're going to do about this. Because my concern is you have a bunch of people that are going to file. They're going to have this big bill. They're not going to have a plan for how to deal with it. And then they're going to start, they're going to get behind with the IRS. And you do not want to owe the IRS money because the taxes and penalties that they're going to charge you so that you can make monthly payments is a nightmare. And, and the payments are so low. I know somebody that went through this. The payment was so low, they weren't even making a dent in what they owed. I, I told them, you've got to increase how much you're paying because you're never going to get out of this. I mean, that, it's a real horrible trap. Anyway, so was there a phone call? Oh, you had that look on your face. I'm just looking at you. Ah. <laughs> All right. So other things you need to know about this tax season. Uh, please, if you can, file electronically and use direct deposit. They said Paper returns and paper checks are going to take even longer this year. Why aren't these people back in the office? Why can't they socially distance and spray some Lysol around and put a mask on? I do not understand. They're only at home. Department of Labor, all of them, they're all still at home. Not and At least Department of Labor, you can call them now. For the last year, you couldn't even call yeah, anyone. We both called them Never called times. me back. Never got a return Never phone Never responded to my email, to all these people go, trying to file for unemployment and couldn't file. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Um, let me see. Stimulus payments. <clears throat> <clears throat> Crud, Randy. I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> oh, no. Well, why don't you pick up the article? I, have <laughs> I don't have it. You don't have this one? 
Okay, stimulus payments. Um, if you didn't receive a payment or think you qualify for more than you got, you can claim a recovery rebate credit on your 2020 tax return. Okay, what if you took a 401k distribution under the COVID Act? Uh, so under the CARES Act, you could take a distribution uh, penalty-free and you could report all the income on your 2020 tax return or in equal installments over three years. Alternatively, you can recontribute the money back into the retirement account. Now, if you did that, make sure that you that you fit under the guidelines because we had a friend that was talking about doing it and he didn't meet the guidelines. They're very, very specific. You have to qualify in writing that you had certain scenario under this COVID to qualify you to do that. Um, gig work is back to that whole doing, you know, working self-employment stuff. If you picked up a gig job, you have to include it on your tax return. And the biggest thing about a lot of these jobs are delivery jobs. And so you're using your personal vehicle, which means that you can take the mileage deduction on your tax return. So you would fill out a Schedule C that would flows through the flows through your 1040, where you include all of your business expenses and um, include the mileage deduction is huge. I, th- I think it's 48 or 58 cents this year a mile. So a lot of people that picked up these side jobs delivering food for Uber Eats or whatever, by the time you take in the mileage deduction, you pretty much don't have to claim any income in most cases, I believe. It goes for Uber. It goes for all anybody that's a 1099 worker that's delivering stuff. So if you have one of those people in your life, reach out to them and make sure that they're doing that right uh, and have them get with a tax prepared to understand how. And if they haven't been doing it right this year, make sure that they get prepared. If they weren't doing it right last year, make sure they get it straight this year. You should keep keep a notebook in their car and on every trip they, or every day write down their mileage That's right. because it's a yep. huge deduction. All right. Yes. Sherry, I want to do a, an SEC investor alert. Okay? Oh, yeah. All right. Um, thinking about investing in the latest hot stock, Understand this, you need to understand the significant risk of short-term trading based on social media. And if you've ever heard the term FOMO, it's the fear of missing out. And that we're seeing a lot of that going on in the markets. Let's see here. Uh, the SEC Office of Inve- Investor Education and Advocacy warns investors of significant risk of short-term investing based on social media, especially in the volatile markets, and provides tips for uh, long-term investing. You want me to put this on hold? Or take yeah, the call? let's okay, go to the We're going to put this on hold for a second or two. Good, Good morning. morning. You're on the air with Randy and Sherry. Good morning, good morning. The very best to you two early this morning. Good y'all morning. Um, listen, you all are getting sophisticated. We can't hardly, we cannot hear, we can't hear, hear you. you. And he's got the volume turned all the way up. Okay. Are you on speakerphone? Sure. Are you on speaker? Yes. Yeah, we, that's the problem. Please take it off speaker. Okay. How about now? Is that better? Just barely. 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 Anyways, anyways, keep going. <clears throat> okay. Um, this is what I wanted to um, tell you all. Randy had said something, or both of you, about the VA and them uh, filling those forms out. You know, as soon as mom, you know, got her situation the way it is, I had a social worker come in here and try to help me fill out this form so that she could get some Bobby. services. And hey, we can't. You're yeah. cutting in and out. Yeah, we're we're gonna. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna let you go. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Yeah, he had a situation where a person came into the home and was extremely helpful with his mother. Yeah. As far as teaching him things, special things he could do with her. She's she, he's caring for her full time. Anyways. Anyway, I'm afraid he's going to call back, and I'm not going to be able. Well, to. keep going. Okay. Anyway, the SEC's Office of Investor Education and Advocacy warns investors of the significant risk of short-term investing based on social media, especially in volatile markets. And it provides tips for long-term investing. Investing in bubbles or manias. Um, financial manias or bubbles is on the rapid rise um, in investments, reflecting a high degree of collective enthusiasm or exuberance regarding an investment uh, perspective. The rapid rise is usually followed by uh, a contraction in the investment price. The contraction or the panic occurs when there is a wide-scale selling of the investment that causes a sharp decline in investment prices and that's what you saw happening with the GameStop you know right. and it ended badly but it's for, still happening with it, other companies they're still correct. going they're going through different sectors they're they're piling in they're driving the prices up and the prices are dropping so, so if if you get in, <clears> if you get <throat> caught up in the mania just be careful <clears throat> because 
you know, I hope you're not playing with the money that you need to retire on. And then the next thing was momentum investing. Another investing strategy strategy that can pose high risk for retail investors is momentum investing. An investor using momentum investing strategy seeks to capitalize on the continuance of existing trends in the market. A momentum investor believes that the large increase in the price of an investment will be followed by additional gains or vice versa uh, for declining values. If that belief turns out to be incorrect, it can lead to a significant loss. And then there's noise trading. A third related strategy is noise trading. Noise trading occurs when an investor makes a decision to buy or sell an investment without the use of fundamental data that is economic, financial, or other qualitative and quantitative measures that can affect the the value of the investment. Noise traders generally have poor timing followed by the trends uh, and overact to good news and bad news in the market. And we see that a lot, too. Yes. You know, people wait way too long to get into they don't stop. the market. They don't put any stops on the That's positions, right. and so it drives right. it all the way back to the ground. And there's a lot of <clears throat> there's a lot of talk right now <clears throat> that, you know, we've got this bear market going on, but how much longer will it truly go? All, all right. right. Back to the phones. Back to the phones. You're on with Randy and Sherry. Good morning. That sounds better. Great. I am so glad. Listen, um, I, I can't remember who brought it up, either you or uh, Randy, but you were talking about the VA and about um, getting somebody to go down there and help them, you know, fill out those forms. Um, I was going to say, I was filling out a form for my mom, and that thing, I think it was like 25 pages long or something. It was a huge number of pages. And so I, I asked the social worker to come in here and help me, you know, do it. And we sat down here for three hours. Oh, my gosh. We didn't, we didn't get anywhere close to filling that thing out. I looked. I had to go get, you know, documents. I worked on that thing for three days. And I had spent over 20 hours filling that form out. And then before I got ready to send it in, I called the social worker over. We went over all of the information. We even called the place. Uh, and tried to get the same person, you know, each time to tell them, you know, what we were doing and to make sure that we had everything filled out. I sent that form in, and they sent something back saying that I I didn't fill out everything. They needed one more item or or something. And I'm telling you, I was so frustrated. I said, oh, the heck with it. Right now, you know, I'm getting what she needs. But in case there was a problem or something like that, then uh, we could have fallen back on, you know, the um, – the VA to help, you know, with with mom's care. So well, let me, <clears throat> it let just me, never did go through. So I well, really me, think that they ought to have people to help you with that kind of stuff that are actually in the VA. Get them to help you. Yeah, I don't know if they do. I don't know if the vectors. I don't think they do. Well, no, me, I don't think they Bobby, do. Yes. Let me say something about the whole aid in attendance because a lot of people don't know about it. Um, okay. Your mom, because that that's what you're applying for, right? Yeah. That you, right. she doesn't qualify. I'm sorry. She doesn't qualify. So oh, yeah, that, and, that's right. Well, well, yeah, hang on. Let me, let me, Bobby, oh, <laughs> Bobby, let me educate people on this so that they're, if they're okay. listening, they can learn something. So in 2018, the VA, the, the rules got changed. VA aid and attendance could can pay for home care, facility care in a local facility, or a facility care in a VA facility. <clears throat> the hus- the person who served has to have served during a certain period of time. Uh, in the military, and they've just extended that backwards, so more people qualify and are eligible now. But in 2018, they changed it, and there is an income test and an asset test. And if you make over so much a year, or you have so much more at more than 100, that's roughly 125 grand in assets total, including property, you do not qualify for this program anymore. That's okay. the problem. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Well, see, this is what I was telling them before I filled the form out. You know, I told them about, and they kept saying, well, just go ahead and send it in. Just go ahead. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because they said we can't make that kind of determination over the phone. Well, if anybody, if if anybody, if anybody goes to the website, they should read the rules on each of the different programs that are there. And if they say there's an income cap, then they shouldn't apply for it. The Vector Center, that's who I called. When this, when I heard that this was going on, I called the Vector Center, and I talked to the person 
over this and they told me the income and the asset cap and they said if they have more than that they will not get benefits i wish so that that i tell everybody call the vector center now uh to try to get to the bottom of some of this stuff because i've called the va in dublin they wouldn't call me back i've called and i've gotten misinformation and so the vector center i think is the best source of data of of intel local Anyway. Well, Bobby, thanks for the call. We've got to get on some more uh, data before we get off the air today. Very good. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, anyways, I want to cover a few things out of this newsletter. We had a really good one uh, that we printed out yesterday, and we don't have it. There's about five minutes left. Um, so he's talking about so, – so he is a technical indicator person, and so he tends to look at the numbers of everything and call out where – does this not look right? Um, Because we can look at the market going up and up, and I can look at the VIX, which is only at 22. That's a volatility indicator, which is pretty low. Not as low as it's been during really good times, but it's a lot lower than it was uh, back when all this mess started. Back in March of 2020, the VIX was up to 85. Volatility was extremely high. So anyways, he talks about extremes. The more the major market indexes have continued to march higher over the last month, accompanied by increased risk and obvious excesses. The current level of euphoria, fueled by Washington's stimulus packages and rock-bottom interest rates, shows little sign of abating, but this potential cocktail is not sustainable long-term. So he talks about the warning flags. A concerning trend has been developing within the S&P 500, where a small number of mega-cap growth companies account for a disproportionately large percentage of the index, making it overly reliant on the performance of these stocks. Less than 2% of the stocks in the S&P 500 index now account for 27% of the market cap. And so any one of those stocks f- swinging wildly right. will cause the entire index to swing. It's, it's Yeah, I don't like that. I see a lot of people think that they can just – you know, uh, throw money into the stock market and they're going to become rich. It just does not work that way. So be careful what you're investing in. So the other thing is borrowing to buy margin debt is at a new record high. Uh, the mania on Wall Street has also become apparent in margin debt, which served, surged to an all-time high in its most recent reading. Since margin debt is money borrowed by investors to buy more stock, it is a good measure of speculation and elevated market risk. Incredibly, this latest significant increase in margin debt does not yet include any of the Reddit-driven frenzies that happened in January and February. That's right. That's not even in this. That's right. So that would make it even worse. Um, Parabolic moves in margin debt, like what we're seeing today, were precursors to the market peaks in both 2000 and 2007. The extreme degree of market vulnerability represented by this indicator will not be revealed until a final peak is reached and this leverage starts to rapidly unwind. So what else in this do you want to cover? Anything in particular? I want to skip that next page. Analyzing the weight of the evidence, risk-conscious investors today are facing a problem. How to invest through a speculative mania? It isn't the first such period in history, and it won't be the last. Unique to today's situation, however, is the fact that the market has the full support of the Federal Reserve behind it, and as a result, investors seeking yield and reasonable risk return proposition are facing quite a conundrum. It is times like this where the fundamental picture becomes impaired. The technical analysis can shine a guiding light. And so... Um, one last thing about this uh, in this article um, you see here. One of the biggest challenges for the economy is achieving a sustained recovery in the risk of a persistent loss of confidence on the part of consumers and small business owners. They jointly account for a substantial portion of U.S. GDP. It will be crucial in determining the traje- trajectory of the ongoing recovery. I don't think I want to – oh, NF- NFIB. So the National Federation of Independent Businesses, Small Business Optimism – uh, index has fallen to its lowest point in over seven years. And there's a bunch of other stuff in here, but there's 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 so much information. But please, if you're going to invest on your own, subscribe to some service that helps you, or at the very least, have trailing stops, um, so that if a mar- so if you have a holding and it drops 10, 15 percent from its peak. It goes ahead and stops out. You stop out of it, and then you can always get back in. That's right. But you don't want to ride something all the way up and then ride something all the way down. Extremely frustrating and stressful. That's correct. So yeah. spend a little money to get a system set up so that you can uh, have have something, some kind of protection. Or right. take it to somebody that actively manages money like we do. Yeah. Sherry, uh, let's talk about millennials and their mm. retirement savings. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, this article that we got here for, um he, it, it's really eye-opening about how millennials look at their retirement 
So anyway, how the, they look at anything, right? <laughs> We're not but our get kids are that. millennials. They, they've gone. Our kids are. 31, 33, and they've gone to their little rough patches and, yeah. and stuff, but they're coming out the other end, yeah. okay? So I think, but we've provided them with a lot of guidance. Then, I mean, I, I would tell them stuff that they need to do just flat out. And we only have two minutes ah, left. Okay. We probably should hang on to this one for the next time. You want to? That probably is a good idea. Yeah, because we don't want to rush through this one because it's actually very, very good information. Uh, but if you are a millennial out there, I encourage you to start taking uh, a little bit out of your income. Every pay period, if you can get it pre-tax, it's even better, and put it into a retirement savings plan. Right. And, you know, if you've got a little chunk of change that you want to, go ahead and start a program. Uh, give us a call at the office, and we'll get you with Becca. And uh, But if you don't start saving now, your your retirement may not be what you think, uh, what you envision. Right. So... The other one are the self-employed people. That's yeah, right. If you're self-employed, oh, yes, absolutely. you can contribute... Now, there are limit income limits as to who can contribute to Roth IRAs, but that's after-tax money that grows tax-deferred for the rest of your life unless Congress changes it. Or you can contribute to an IRA only if you can deduct it on your tax return, which is a really good deal. And then there's also other SEP IRAs and all sorts yep. of simples and all sorts of other things that you can do. So, But, but if this is Greek to you, then... Um, talk make an to appointment. A, make an appointment with us, 478-922-8100. And you can do it on your own, but you just might not even know what to do. It may take you longer to get smart on this whole thing. And, and you know, just you know, put the money into a, to the account and leave it there. Just right. don't take it out. And that's going to be a lot of what we talk about next week. Yep. Or should we say Becca's going to talk about there it next go. week. Good. So you've been listening to Your Money with Randy and Sherry, and Steve is taking a break today. And uh, actually, he won't be here next week either, but he'll be back soon. And if you'd like to come see us, you know, give us a call at 478-922-8100. Compl- we have complimentary consultations in Macon and Warner Robbins. And let's see, don't forget our special reports. There's some really good ones out there, and they're in the process now of being updated on the website. So, uh, but the data is the same. It's just uh, maybe a couple of small things have changed. But anyway, have, have a, a great, great weekend. weekend. The views expressed on the show should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities or services mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risk, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can assure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should only be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Securities are offered through Royal Alliance Associates Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Advisory services are offered through Rosenberg Financial Group, a registered investor advisor not affiliated with Royal Alliance Associates Incorporated. Offices are located at 2517 Moody Road, Warner Robins, and 4875 Riverside Drive, Suite 201 in Macon. Phone numbers are 922-8100 and 741-4457.